Welcome back to Movies TV Mad. You can follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. I wasn't going to make this video, but I started watching Superman Returns and I'm really enjoying that film. And I always liked it, but I understood it had its flaws. But what I'm loving watching that film again, just seeing the joy of Superman. The kind of joy Henry Cavill is determined to bring back to Superman and a Superman movie. In fact, I've never seen a determination from an actor to do this. But why? Because Henry understands who Superman truly is. In Superman Returns, when Superman flies across the sky, everyone stands still and says, Oh my God, it's Superman. Wow. When he saves the space shuttle and the plane, which is still one of my favourite live action Superman sequences ever. When he saves it, everyone around the world is standing there, applauding, cheering, cuddling each other. My friends, this is who Superman is. A joyful inspiration. He's not a god like some directors would love to make him. Like Zack Snyder, he's our fireman in the DC Universe. And if you treat him like that, then you can say, OK, it's fun to see our fireman in the DC Universe saving people and being awesome and being gee whiz. But then what does he do when he's not our fireman in the DC Universe? He has a disguise. He wears glasses, he's Clark Kent in the Daily Planet. And again, seeing Superman return, something that we really missed from the Snyderverse was these joyful interactions in the Daily Planet. Yes, Clark is in the Daily Planet at the end of Man of Steel. Also, we see him in BVS. Now, I don't dislike the interactions between him and Perry and Lois in the Daily Planet in BVS. I think it's very Superman-esque. But it lacks that kind of office banter we saw in the Donnerverse, in Superman the movie, in Superman 2. It lacks that. And it lacks that kind of banter we had in Superman Returns as well. Superman Returns was the last movie to do a genuine Superman take, a joyful Superman. Now you're going to throw that back to me and look at the box office. I bet you're Googling the box office right now and saying, but Mick, that made just shy of 300 million. Well, I'm going to explain to you a few things. Now, at that time when Superman Returns was released, Smallville season five was about to air because I think Superman Returns was released in the summer. Smallville was on a hiatus from, they ended from season four, where Clark was just about to see the Fortress of Solitude rise. I mean, how ironic. But you may not know this, that Brian Singer approached um, Tom Welling and Michael Rosenbaum to play Clark Kent Superman and Lex Luthor in Superman Returns. This is what Brian Singer really wanted. There were discussions with the CW, DC and WB if they could put Smallville on a longer hiatus so Tom and Michael could be part of Superman Returns. It just couldn't be done because at the end of the day they still wanted to make money. Was it the WB or the CW at the time? I can't remember. Maybe it was just about the WB and becoming the CW. And so that was a huge shame. And I think part of the reasons that Superman Returns wasn't, didn't do well, wasn't the actual movie itself. As I say, it does have its flaws, but it's wonderful. And by the way, never watch Superman Returns without watching the deleted Return to Krypton sequence. That should never have been deleted. But I love that scene. Brian Singer did a lot of good things with Superman Returns. So it was a big tragedy for the film that Tom and Michael wasn't involved and it wasn't a Smallville movie in a way. Because at that time, people saw Superman as Tom Welling and people saw Lex Luthor as Michael Rosenbaum. Now, ironically, Kevin Spacey delivers one of the greatest live action movie Lex Luthor's ever, as far as I'm concerned. And Brandon Ralph plays a great rendition of Christopher Reeve's Clark Kent and Superman. It all works. But when you've got such a popular Superman television show and you throw a Superman movie without those elements in it, because we were all obsessed with Tom and Michael, you know, Smallville was being watched by millions of people around the world. 
And there was a disappointment that they weren't used. And at the time, I didn't know that Singer had approached Welling and Rosenbaum to be involved in that movie. And that's a shame. And it's a shame they didn't think, OK, you can't be our Superman and Lex Luthor. But how about if we have um, a young teenage Clark Kent flashback? And what if we say that you were Clark and Lex in the Smallville era? They could have done that which at least would have satisfied us Smallville fans, but never mind. So I think there was that element why the movie didn't do as well as it could have done. But as well, although Smallville was huge at the time, superheroes weren't a thing in 2006, I think Superman Returns was released. So yeah, we're not, we wasn't where we are today. So even though WB were hugely disappointed and actually did green light Superman Returns, for a sequel called Superman Man of Steel. Superman Man of Steel was going to see Brainiac in a live action Superman movie for the first time. He arrives, Superman shows him around, but then Brainiac decides that Superman protecting Earth instead of uh, conquering it is a mistake and then there's a breakdown. Now we know that there, Superman has a son in Superman Returns called Jason, Brainiac disguises himself as Jason and Superman kills his own son by mistake. Now that would have been, as Brian Singer described it, our Wrath of Khan Superman movie. I'm still very, very sad we didn't get that sequel. And as well as getting this Henry Cavill Superman movie, maybe there's a place for a Superman Returns sequel, for a Kingdom Come Superman. Who knows? Who knows what the future will hold? That's what we could have had with Hamada's multiverse strategy. But I don't think Hamada was that ambitious or had the imagination to do that, regrettably. So I've never seen this drive in an actor like we're seeing from Henry Cavill saying, no, the John Williams theme is the way to go. You know, a brighter, inspirational Superman, a more fun Superman is the way to go. It's not a popular thing to say in 2022 where people think, you know, the pacing's got to be fast you know, it's all got to be dark and he's got to be a Christ-like figure. And Henry's saying, well, actually, no. So can this kind of Superman work and be relatable in the 21st century? I think it can, as long as the film doesn't have the pacing of Superman Returns, Superman the movie, and Superman 2. It can be, it can have that spirit, but it has to be more fast-paced. And I do feel that Henry Cavill does understand that. And you know, so I just wanted to really do this video because I'm kind of hyped watching Superman Returns. Um, you'll never understand like, how it felt to be a Superman fan at the time, knowing we were getting this movie, that it was a sequel to Superman the Movie and Superman 2. I mean, I grew up on those movies. Superman the Movie, as I bore on about every single time I do a video, was the first movie. It's the reason I love Superman. Smallville's the reason I love DC. It taught me about the DC universe as well. And I think Superman Returns does prove that you can do a really good, you know, you know, inspirational Superman. And again, the box office for one reason or the other didn't work out. But we are in an era where superheroes are the westerns of our society today. And all you have to do is put on a cape and they make a billion dollars. Well, not all of them, of course, when we look at the drop-off for Black Adam. But that's Black Adam. We're talking about Superman here. In two years' time, we'll be watching a more inspirational Superman movie. I believe this is not the Henry Cavill Superman from Man of Steel, BVS, and the Snyder Cut. I think they're starting from scratch with this Superman. Now, considering he's already played one version of Superman, to play another one is a big challenge for him. But in the comics, we see, you know, Elseworld versions of, of Superman and these DC characters. And, you know, what they could say is, look, this is just another version of Superman. And get the audience used to the multiverse like that. So I think Henry is being very bold and brave by standing up, basically defending the integrity of Superman. No, this is Superman. He's inspirational. When he flies past, people cheer and clap. And that's okay. The very opposite to what David Goya felt when he was writing Man of Steel. That it's dumb that people love him straight away. 
But that's the point. It's the imagination and the wonder of Superman. It's okay to let go of that disbelief and say, I live in this more positive world where this guy, who is from another planet, has powers and flies, gets trusted by society straight away because we can see the good in him. This has been Movies TV Mad. I am Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wife. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until I see you again, goodbye. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen.